One of the goals of this class and this club that you guys have is getting you guys to think like scientists. And one of the big problems that we have in education and in math and English, all the classes that you guys take, is teachers always tell you what to do. I mean, I need to break you out of that mold. Um, that is the one thing that's going to make you guys fail at this class um, as we advance next year and we get into like Arduino, uh, building microcontrollers and program makers. Anything that's going to make you fail, it's not going to be because you guys are dumb. Um, it's going to be that you guys are scared to be creative. Um, so that's what I need to, you guys to think of. Right now, here's the challenge I'm putting forth to you. We have a phone. Our goal is that by the end of, not next week, but the week after, uh, we'll start next week, but by the end of the next week, you guys have your own portable battery operated phone charger. That's our goal, all right? So the question that I want you guys to think of for like the first like three minutes, four minutes, um, is what do you guys need in order to be able to do that? I don't need you to understand electronics. It doesn't matter whether you've been here before. Just give me general ideas of things that you need to know in order to create something. So you don't, you could be an English major, um, you could be a scientist, you can think about it engineering wise. Um, I need you guys to think about materials you'll need, size abilities that you guys have, like how big does that have to be, how small does that have to be. Um, think about that stuff on your own for about like three minutes-ish, and um, then we'll go over it together as a group. All right, folks, attention up front, please. Hi, Skyla. All right, um, so let's talk about some of the things that you guys need. So first thing you got to know is that your phone requires five volts to run. That's the first thing we all have to know, fact. All phones, whether you have an iPhone, an Android, they all run off of five volts. All right, so what are some things that you guys are going to want for your phone charger? All right, let's see it. Resistors. All right, so why? To be able to, uh, what's it called, suppress, uh, Unneeded electricity. All right, so let me come back to you. You're not wrong, but let me come back to you because we need something before you say that. Yes? Um, wires. Wires? All right, we definitely need to fit a bunch of wires in there. How many is going to depend on your design? Christian? A voltage source. A voltage source. So what voltage source are you thinking? We need a five volts to charge your cell phone. A five volt battery. All right, so I like that idea. He said a five volt okay. battery. So this is what scientists do. They think, hey, I need five volts to charge this. Is there such thing as a five volt battery? That's your next problem. Yes. No, oh, no. it's a 9-volt. Oh, no, no. We have a 9-volt battery. 9-volt battery are those really thick ones. Wow, that's totally not a 9-volt battery. 9-volt <laughs> battery are these things that look like this. They're square with a little weird looking thing on the top. 5-volt huh? or 9-volt? This is a 9-volt battery, so these exist. All right, so what else exists that you guys are used to? 1.5 volts. So 1.5 volts come in a bunch of sizes. You can have a D battery, which is really fat. You can have an A, double A battery, which is skinny, and then you can have a triple A battery, which is really skinny. Any one of these, doesn't matter whether it's the big one or the small one, these are all 1.5 volts. Therefore, how many of them do I need in order to charge your circuit? Four, we get you to what? We need three. Six volts. Okay, I like that idea. So you could use four Ds, four double As, four triple As. That'll get you to five volts. So these are all things that you want to think of. All right, so we have a nine volt battery. You could have four double A's, four triple A's, and four D batteries. That works, okay? So if we have, for instance, in this case, this would be a total of six volts. This is a total of nine volts. Now we get to what Nasir said, right? Since we don't have a five volt battery, if I have something that's six volts and you don't want to blow your phone up, which can only take five, we now need? Resistors. Resistors, what will resistors do to that? It will get it down to a five volt battery. Excellent, the exact wording is it'll pull down. Right, it's gonna pull that voltage down. So we're gonna need some sort of resistors in the circuit in order to take something that's a high voltage down to a low voltage. Anything else? You need your micro USB connected. All right, we need a USB connector. So this is gonna be a really interesting one. Of the USB connector, what we need specifically in our charger is a USB female port. All right? What? Optional is the thing that actually connects to your phone because you can either A, put that cable in your charger so that every time you pull your charger out, you just plug your phone into it, yeah. or like now with computers, the cable's not always hanging out of the computer, you have the option of just carrying the cable around. Mm -hmm. So that is up to you guys as engineers. Do you want to design it so that you can, or the cable's automatically in your charger itself so it's ready to hook up to an Android, or do you want the ability for your charger to not be permanent? So let me say that again. So say this is your charger, you build it in a box, here's your USB female. Um, do you want to automatically solder, permanently solder an Android cable to this? What's the downfall of that? It only has one use. 
right, for one type of phone, yeah. right? So now if Juliet comes over with her iPhone and goes, yo, let me use your charger, I gotta go, sorry, it, it only works with, um, it's a five volt charger, but it only works with Android. You can do that, it's your phone charger, I don't, I don't care. Uh, but if your goal is you want it to work for Apple as well, then obviously you don't wanna put this cable on. Likewise, if you put an Apple cable on, it's only gonna be good for Apple. But that's, it's your choice, if you wanna be like, I don't want to carry a cable around. I just want to carry this box around, and I can charge my phone at all times. Then you're done. Um, that's different. Uh, we'll talk about what that is in a second. Let's see your question. Yeah. How do you make it? Can you make multiple, like in one? Then so you'd have two different USB yeah, ports. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to do that. You can wire up one USB port so that it works for Apple oh. or um, Android. The so difference the device is, is going to work for every single different kind. The difference is once you hook up the cable that you plug in that cable is going to be locked in to only be good for your phone. So do you want to make this two separate pieces where you have to carry around your box and the cable to charge your phone? Because every phone has a different charger, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Android's all the same, but iPhones, especially the type of iPhone has a different one, right? Um, so you can either hook it up so that it's permanent, so that your charger only works for iPhone 5 or only for iPhone 6, or you can hook it up so that, hey, these are separate pieces and I'm going to reuse it later on. That's up to you. Um, it depends on your design, depends on your case, how you want to do it. Yeah. We, we need a USB female, we have to have it. I, I have them for you, but yes. Uh, what are you going to plug your cable into? How, what are you going to plug your cable into to charge your phone if you don't have a USB yeah. port? Uh, you can cut the wires and you can connect the wires directly. I would argue that's, that's more work for you um, than it is to not do that. But you could do that. Well, that's an option. You could take a wire, cut off the USB, then uh, strip the wire back and then take the four wires that are inside this wire and hook them up. Um, if you want to do that, it's fine. Um, is this going to be portable? Uh -huh. So like, are, are we going to do a, like, a separate, like, you know how the put charges, take that one so you can charge it too? Are we going to have to charge that? You can do that. Um, that we can't do. That's a very good question. Um, so what Deja said was, are we going to be able to make it so that you can make the, the portable device itself chargeable? That way you don't need a battery, it itself can charge. Um, in order to do that, I would need to teach you AC electronics, which I haven't done yet. We've only learned DC. Um, DC being like battery voltage type of uh, voltage. Your wall sockets are AC, so back to Rajay's first question, that little box you pulled out is a transformer. Um, that's AC electronics, and I have not taught that to you guys yet. Um, but that's cool. In the future, you can do that, definitely. So we're going to change the battery, I want the battery back the engine. Okay, so now you're going to get to my next point. I love it. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. Rafael? I'm thinking about maybe we could like, um so like one of like little LED lights that would kind of show that like there's still power running through it. Right. Somebody had that back there. Somebody had two LEDs. He had green and red. Um, you guys can just keep green. Um, you really only need it when it's charging, it's on, or when it's not charging, or maybe when you turn the power on, it's on. Whatever you want. You can have 80 LEDs in there. Remember the downfall is every time you put an LED in there, it's going to do two things. Number one, it's going to take up space. Number two, it's going to use up electricity, which means your battery dies faster. You can put 80 LEDs in there and be like, all right, when the five volt starts dying and it gets to 4.8, turn green, then turn orange, then turn, you can do that all you want. Uh, but the more that you put in, the more electricity you dump, the more space it's gonna be, the bigger your container's gonna be. So LEDs are so light. So what's light. the point of having a portable thing if it's just gonna die out? Okay, so that's gonna get me to my next point. All right, so now, if we put these batteries in, so you have to think of things, right? First, if you guys decide to use double A's, triple A's, or D's, all right, what do you guys know about the size of your compartment that you're gonna need? You need it's gotta be bigger. It's gonna be bigger. So if you use a nine volt, you guys can put it in a smaller space. If you use double Ds, you're gonna need a huge, huge um, thing. Uh, if you use triple A's, which would be make more sense. Obviously on the back of these calculators, these use four triple A's. Um, that's how much space you're gonna need. You're, just to fit the batteries, you would need this much space. So keep that in mind as you're designing things. Um, the other problems that you're gonna run into, right? Um, what's the downfall about 9 volt batteries? If you use a 9 volt battery plug, what's mm -hmm. going to be a downfall of that? Um, right, so when it, so when you use the other ones, right, uh -huh. one battery could die out for not, like, like you can still have three batteries that's well, still good. That's actually a good thing, right? Because then you have to buy how many batteries? You know, one battery. One battery? So but that's if, good. If that one dies, you got to buy the whole thing. Uh-huh. So that, that's one thing that's good. What, what else, what sucks about 9 volt batteries? Yeah. It's really basic. If you guys are thinking of like China it's sleep. It's because it can have yeah. nine volts and one trillion. No? Any more resistance? No? Is it because you should using one battery? No. Right now, if I wanted to get a double A battery, what would I do? Go to a corner store. Well, I mean, not even that. I would actually, I could actually ask another teacher, hey, you got double A's? 
Most likely they're going to say yes. If I say, yeah, you got triple A's, most likely they'll say yes. If I say, do you have a nine volt battery? How many teachers in this school no. have nine, 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 nine volts? Zero. Nine Front desk isn't going to have nine volts. If you go to most corner stores, they won't have nine volt batteries. If you go to CVS, obviously, or like a Walmart, the bigger the store, the more likely. Um, nine volts are harder to come by. So you also have to think of, if you're using this phone, right? You're out with your friends and you're like, man, my phone's dead. I want to use this charger. I need to run to Wawa real quick and buy batteries to plug it into. What store by you, what are they going to have, right? If you build your whole, whole socket for nine volts and you have no stores near you that sell nine volts, that's a waste of something, right? So maybe it's worth building a bigger circuit because the supply of nine volt batteries is less wherever you live. It's more convenient to get, like you can get this at like, you know, a mom and pop family mark, like where you buy chips at. Um, you're probably not gonna find a nine volt battery there. So you wanna keep those things in mind. Yeah, let's hear it. But there is, but it's way too much space for double A's and triple A's. It is, so that's the loss. So the benefit you would get is you'd be able to charge your phone anywhere at any time because the abundance of triple A's is greater. Um, and the loss you would get is a size. Quick question. Yes. Do you need four triple E's for that thing? Or That's the next question I'm gonna get to, because you guys, this is where Deja, what Deja said is very important. Deja said, uh, after a while, batteries are gonna start doing what? Dying. Dying. So if you start out with six volts, remember your phone needs five volts to charge, those batteries come to you, they're already not at 1.5, they're probably around 1.3 or 1.4. They're already like dead by the time you get them. The longer they're on the shelf, that's why they have an expiration date. If you leave them on there for like a year, they'll start selling them to you brand new um, at like 0.8 volts, 0.9, like they really rip you off the longer yeah, they're on the show. Uh, yeah, they have, they have expiration date. Um, because they'll be pretty dead. Um, you can test that out. When you guys try a new battery, you can hook it up to your volt meters that you have, your DMMs, and you'll notice that they're really low. Oh, no, no, that's, that's like after it corrodes. That, that's way, way later. Um, but here's my next point. So already what I'm trying to tell you is if you hook up four batteries, most likely, realistically, you guys are probably going to be around like 5.4 volts, maybe 5.3 volts. All right. So now, what Deja is saying is, as soon as the battery starts dying, this is going to dip. Once that dips below 5 volts, what's going to happen to your phone? It's going to stop. It's going to not charge. So it's 4 volts enough to charge your phone, or 4 batteries enough to charge your phone. No. So already you have to start thinking like that. This 9 volt is looking good because you have a good, what, 4 volts? of this to deplete before you have to change that battery. Whereas here, you're gonna have to change your battery right away if you use four. Now you can hook up six of them, you can hook up 20 of them if you want. Again, the change is how large do you want this? So like Abe said, he's using a ginormous dinosaur for his phone charger. If it's a ginormous dinosaur, sure, hook up like 80 batteries to it. Um, no problem, in, in this case, you can even just slide them in, right? Um, if they're double A's or triple A's, or you can hook up uh, 18 volts if you want to. That was very um, so here's the thing that you guys have to realize, and we're going to talk about this more as we talk about um, the exact specific components that we're having. Um, but I bought you guys voltage regulators. The voltage regulators I bought, voltage regulators you haven't played with yet, uh, voltage regulator is a component that looks like that. Um, what a voltage regulator does is it takes some input, it has a range of values, and it outputs a specific voltage. All right, so the ones I bought you output 5 volts. They take up to, a, I think it's about 10 volts. So if you give it anywhere between five and 10, it'll spit out five volts, that's what it does. All right, so you have to think about that though, because if you're like, hey, I'm Abe, I want to put in 40 batteries in here, can the voltage regulator you purchase? You'd have to pick one that would take that much voltage and output five. So you're also limited by the components that are out there. We're gonna talk about that um, a little bit more tomorrow.